Evidence of correction. The simplest comparison I can offer is to evidence that she loves you. How obvious do you need it to be? When a woman wants to fuck you, often it will not be so obvious. Instead, she gives off subtle signals and prefers when a man knows how to pick up on those subtleties. A common complaint from man is that women act as if they expect men to be psychic, to read their minds as it were. Well, some men actually know how to do this to some degree. If you can look beyond what seems to be my anthropomorphizing of the Aeon Sophia, she is still female. And this preference for subtlety, for your ability to grasp the granular detail which flies over everyone else's head, applies to the whole company of Pleromic Aeons. But you still want to know how and where her commitment to correcting this experiment in the current Kalpa manifests. The topic of Sophia's correction is almost too vast to tackle, so lightly, but I ask you to briefly consider these questions. Who is Sophia's correction meant for? Is it intended to affect everyone? Is Sophia's correction supposed to be so obvious to everyone on the planet? Are there not billions of Muslims and Christians who are promised no benefit, no protection whatsoever, and often not even the chance opportunity to transform their lives towards a Gaian ethical standard? Are there not hordes of human animals who refuse to transform or even recognize the divine sovereignty of this beautiful planet? What about them? What about them? What about the metaphor of the fifth reel as, oppo as opposed to the alt reel? Haven't you implied that these two reels will ultimately split away? Have you not implied that whatever becomes of the Soviet society, of the archontified zombies, will ultimately be unable to deter those Gaian warriors who select themselves into Sophia's dreaming? Have you not considered the possibility that you can enjoy the beauty to come right here, right now, despite the millions of tads embracing and propagating the ugliness of the archontic infection? May I suggest that she, Sophia, is in no rush to topple those structures. One reason perhaps being that she is that she can do so, if she desired, overnight, in an instant. Is it possible that Sophia refrains from destroying the archontic systems of illusions so that her warriors take the opportunity to oppose it while it still stands? Perhaps even she might allow the Zenosh to complete their global crime against freedom, only to prove that it has no effect against those who are truly free. Now I trigger your Rigpa to something else. In one GNE briefing, you relayed an anecdotal omen where you saw one vulture multiplying into two in mid-flight right before your eyes, and on another occasion witnessed vultures miraculously multiplying into hundreds swarming about the hills around the house. What is that evidence of? It might be evidence that you can relax about the archontic agenda. You can kill all your worry over the possibility of armed grunts coming to your house to enforce their agenda. Now, they haven't done so yet. Don't you suppose she has something to do with that? Don't you suppose she's got your back, backslash? Yes, you should still defend yourself, as you have implied is your intention. But my imagination returns to this possibility. If she can spontaneously generate vultures, she can do the same with bears, or elks, or rhinoceros, or mountain lions. And if you select any one of these, or another creature, even wasp or bees, as your animal allies, could she not produce these animals for your protection if you were in imminent danger? This happens in the movie Avatar, remember? Yet I'm not so fanciful a thinker to disregard the very real threat of defeat at the hands of the zombie horde. 
Even if they kill me, there is still something that cannot die. Anyways, first they have to get to me. And if I go to the wild woods for shelter, that's one more obstacle between myself and them. Even more so if Sophia herself enchants those woods. What if she already has? What if she wants the illusion of archontic domination to continue, in part because it is a challenge we have yet to truly face? Yet, in small ways, in keeping life simple and the simple life, you and I overcome them by living freely without fear. Correction does not mean peace and eternal happiness for all. It doesn't even mean eternal happiness for yourself. I don't think it means that her truth will be proven to the world at large upon a stage with a hundred cameras broadcasting to a hundred million television feeds worldwide. It could happen that way, but there's no need. Currently, it is proven only to those who prove themselves capable of recognition. Recall the epithet of humanity perished due to failure to recognize beauty. What more evidence do you need in addition to the gift of life? The fact that you are still alive and that at least one person, at least one other person transmits in his own way her story, her ethics, and her beauty. It doesn't have to be Heinrich Palmgren. It doesn't have to be Robert Temple or Jeffrey Doherty. It doesn't have to be me. It doesn't have to be anyone even on the public arena. There is no public arena. There are only locales connected by the tads who live there within and connect to one another. Aside from the illusion of connectivity that the internet provides, which is just a modern two-way TV, true connection comes from the earth. Right now, the status is that many humans cannot experience it. With that, there are really only but two solutions. Either those tads learn to become grounded, or they live until they die. In this sense, saving lives has been the worst attack on human decency and dignity. I'm not disturbed at the prospect for anyone who refuses to even consider the natural beauty of this divine experiment and object to the righteous evil of our archontic dogma. Their best prospect is to die. Sophia's correction. Her experiment does not fail if those tads die. If populations are to be decimated, only the cosmic cycle of life remains to be celebrated. That they go on living is kind of a hindrance. It's an obstruction. Give your attention and your empathy to them at the risk of your own sanity. Sophia doesn't need to save them. I could care less if they go on living in whatever decrepit state. It's their choice. Something also has to be said about human sovereignty, that you may be betraying your own sovereignty by putting so much importance on other tads, namely the blind ones that believe and go on believing that they can elect the right representative, that someone else will be their hero, their champion, with greater power and influence to change the laws and allow them to continue living a life with no bond, no connection to the earth. The reality is, the earth is populated with cowards, and the astounding thing is that they are afraid of mere illusions. Their fears and hopes are based in lies. You can still find grown men and women shriek at a harmless common spider, too afraid even to touch it. I think Sophia's about done with those cowards. The chance that that cowardice can reach a beautiful end is slim. As for violence, a morbid consideration, that exists within everyone. You can look outside your window and watch the seemingly peaceful carry on avoiding one another, consuming their own sewage. It might end in carnage, in violence that is not elucidated. Violence that never reaches the correct targets. Maybe I'll fall victim to that. Maybe not. But the odds of it someday bursting through are good. 
If that ever happens, I shall, goddess willing, retreat to my enchanted forest. I place my fate, not my faith, in her hands. That's the best anyone can do. As for the human condition, the Covid agenda, the archontic state of affairs, that situation is doomed. I say this in all cheer. It's a happy consideration. It might someday so happen that they find a way to realize a beautiful end to that nightmare. But be it beautiful or ugly, eventually it has to end. My concern is a sorcerer's, to exit the human condition. I'm concerned for myself and fellow warriors. If I feel, well, I feel I am enough. Even if I die, so long as one Gaian shaman remains standing, that will be enough. I don't need Italy. I don't need Europe or America. Individuals will either get their chit together or they won't. What you can look forward to is that the time of ignorance's demise is nigh. As for now, there's only time for celebration.